Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Mr. Guy Ryder, DG ILO, I want to thank you for holding this uh, virtual uh, ILO summit uh, and at a very critical time for labor all over the world. The lockdown because of the pandemic has hit the labor community the most. And uh, this is why this summit is extremely important, because this is the issue is ongoing. The virus, the pandemic is ongoing. In some countries, it's coming down and then peaking. In other countries, it is still peaking. Uh, and so therefore, it's very important that all of us have some sort of a combined strategy to deal with uh, the with, with this vulnerable section of a society, labor. I will um, just uh, give you an idea of what we went through, what Pakistan went through when we imposed the lockdown to stop the spread of the virus. Um, we, were, uh, we were faced with this twin challenge. On the one hand, we had to deal with uh, a, 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 a spreading disease which we knew would overwhelm our hospitals. Our healthcare we knew could not cope if suddenly uh, this virus peaked. So on one hand, we had to slow the, uh, the spread of the virus. But then we had this other problem. What do we do with this, uh, this uh, informal part of our economy where most of people were self-employed, where the labor force was not registered, so we had no record of, uh, of our labor force. So when the, the moment we imposed the lockdown, suddenly all these people became unemployed. And not just unemployed, uh, the self-employed people or the people who were not registered, in, and, and that's the majority of the labor in our, in our country, in the informal sector. Now the problem we faced was that this labor, their families depended upon the incomes, the daily incomes or the weekly incomes of, of, of this labor. And if they did not, if they could not earn, their families could not eat. So in the beginning, we had the situation in the first two, three weeks where cars going into poor, poor areas of our society were actually attacked by people who were hungry. So therefore, we came up with this uh, idea of a smart lockdown. We decided that uh, we would, on the one hand, um, uh, stop all places where there were public gatherings, so schools, colleges, marriages, anywhere, sports activities, everything we stopped. But on the other hand, we allowed other activities like, um, like, uh, like construction and, and agriculture. We did not stop any uh, uh, workers in the, in the agricultural area because, of course, then we would have had a huge food crisis. Uh, but construction activity, which employs most amount of workers in our cities, we open it up fairly quickly. On top of it, we, we, we decided uh, that we needed to uh, transfer cash to this, uh, to this uh, informal part of our labor uh, uh, which, which there was no uh, registration. Those who were registered, we asked the employers to keep them employed and we, we, we uh, compensated for them. But the ones who weren't registered, we set up the system of uh, people registering uh, with, our, with our SRS program, which was this program through which we distributed money. We had desks everywhere where people were registering there. We had them checked. And then we, in, in Pakistan's history, never was so much money transferred to so many people in such a, sh such a short space of time. So um, that's saved us from some of the worst aspects of the lockdown. For instance, we saw what was happening in India. India did the opposite. They went for a curfew almost. And they had the huge problem of millions of millions of migrant workers who were just left stranded, and on top of it, their poverty, because of this very strict lockdown, their poverty rates have gone up. Uh, but 
having said this, the future is very uncertain. We don't know how long the economy will take to recover from the impact of this lockdown. So, so no one is sure right now where we are headed. Uh, and we are all praying that some uh, vaccine comes out uh, as a cure to this uh, virus. But in the meantime, this uncertainty prevails. And what is, what we all know, the most vulnerable section of our society remains our labor. And that's why the summit is extremely important. We need to share ideas. We need to have some sort of a joint strategy on protecting our labor class, uh, our laborers who are, uh, you know, who are at the moment, businesses uh, are going bankrupt. The, the small and medium industry, which employs the highest number of people, is, is the most vulnerable. In fact, the most bankruptcies are in the small and medium industry. And that's why um, uh, we need some sort of, a, sort of a strategy. Our second problem is, of course, uh, uh, our workers who are working abroad. This country depends upon their remittances, and not just Pakistan. I know a lot of other countries depend upon the remittances of their labor working abroad. Uh, uh, Mr. Guy Ryder, we need some strategy of how we can convince these countries to be uh, a bit more sympathetic, uh, even though we know all countries are facing uh, huge problems right now. But we need them to be sympathetic to these laborers, uh, to these laborers who are working uh, in, 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 in countries uh, which we know are facing problems. Uh, secondly, we need this some joint strategy, uh, how we can um, uh, uh, soften the impact on the lab on, on laborers all over the world. So I thank you again for holding this uh, very important conference at a very critical uh, juncture in history as far as labor is concerned. And uh, we would uh, love uh, to have to share ideas with other people. We would like to know what other countries uh, are planning to do, what their experiences are. We will, we will of course, keep people, up, uh, other countries, updated with what we are, what we are facing, and uh, uh, what we feel the way forward is. But this uh, this conference is is a beginning. I feel. After that, uh, this constant exchange of ideas will, I am sure, will help all of us uh, to help our labour. Thank you.